Hey there everyone, it's Brendan here from Crypto 101 and welcome back to another cryptocurrency market update. And today we have an absolutely action-packed episode in store for all of you. And to kick things off, we finally have a debut date for the Hong Kong Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs. So we're gonna be talking about that in today's episode, but also we have Stripe making their long-awaited return to the crypto markets after six whole years. And to round things off, we have consensus suing the SEC over unlawful seizure of authority. If you're not familiar with who they are, Consensus is a big player in the crypto markets, and they're behind some key projects such as MetaMask, which I'm sure a lot of you who are listening in, if you haven't used them, you've at least heard of them. They're one of the biggest Ethereum wallets out there, uh, and they definitely play a big role in the crypto market. So this is quite the wild story, and of course, as per usual, we're going to be looking at the charts as well. Bitcoin has recovered off the lows. It's seeing some nice upside. It's chopping around after the halving, and there's certainly a lot to talk about. So all that we ask here is that if you like the content that we're making, consider hitting that like button, consider hitting that subscribe button, and maybe check out the links in the description down below if you really like the videos uh, that we have, because there's always going to be more content available inside of our communities. So when we kick things off with these Hong Kong ETFs, man, this has been stirring up a lot of news and excitement, and I think for good reason. Now, a couple of things that we want to clarify. What is this debut date? Because they got approved a couple of weeks ago, and there was the misconception that they're going to go live immediately, or maybe they're going to go live in a couple of months from now. We didn't really know up until literally just a few days ago. And so now we have the official debut date of the end of April, beginning of May. And so what this means is that as early as you know next week, really, we are going to actually have trading live on these Hong Kong Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs. Now, the Hong Kong ETFs are a little bit unique, right? Because we are going to have one of the first major Ethereum ETFs. We've seen Bitcoin ETFs circulating around um, in other countries before the US went ahead and approved them. But there's very few Ethereum ETFs. I think Canada has had one circulating around. It hasn't been wildly successful. But the Hong Kong one is scheduled to be bigger than that. Now, how are these Bitcoin ETFs going to kind of compare to the traditional U.S. markets? Uh, and the answer here is they're likely going to be a lot smaller and less impactful. And that's just the truth of the matter. They are a smaller financial market, especially when you look at their ETF uh, addressable market. And... As we kind of read through this, I think that that's kind of the big takeaway over here is that, you know, is this good news? Absolutely. Because I think what this shows on a global scale is that people around the world, doesn't matter if you're in the States, if you're in Canada, if you're in Europe, if you're in, you know, in, in Asia, in South America, in Australia, people are interested in having access to Bitcoin, whether it is the traditional sense or through these ETFs globally. And that's what we're starting to see happen here. And it goes beyond Bitcoin with the Ethereum ETF kind of coming out as well. So I think that is the first major point to hit home is that this is now just fully a global movement and everyone around the world wants Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF exposure. And so that's what we're seeing from here. Now, is this going to bring us to 100K? Probably not on Bitcoin. You know, again, this is going to be a lot smaller in terms of the um, the United States Bitcoin spot ETFs that we've seen from Fidelity and BlackRock and Van Eck and a lot of those other players. The Hong Kong market just is a smaller one, but it's not insignificant by any means. So is it going to be the catalyst that brings Bitcoin to a hundred thousand, a million dollars? Probably not, but it's still a big net positive at the end of the day. I, and especially so when it comes to these Ethereum ETFs, because it looks like that is going to be the new precedent that's getting set as we move forward. Now, what's happening over here with Stripe? Well, Stripe is finally making their great return to the crypto markets after a six-year hiatus. So it says Stripe is going to be start taking crypto payments starting with USDC, which is a very popular stablecoin coming from uh, the Circle Group. Um, and so what we're having essentially happen over here is, and this is probably puts it the best, but you know this will be the first time that Stripe has taken crypto payments since 2018 when it dropped support for Bitcoin due to it being so quote unquote unsustainable. Um, but now it looks like all of a sudden, boom, crypto is popular again and they want to get back into it. And there's been other businesses that have that have done this where, you know, crypto is popular. They'll add features. It you know goes into a bear market. They'll take it away. It comes back to popularity. They'll add it again. 
it's no like new thing for the crypto markets, right? I think the big takeaway here is that, you know, the company has processed around a trillion dollars in transactions last year alone, and it's still growing. You know, the company's worth around $65 billion on paper. This is a fairly sizable company that if they're doing a, a trillion dollars in transactions, they're worth $65 billion. And guess what? They want to give cryptocurrency exposure. And it goes back to the first theme of what we were talking about here with saying, hey, everyone around the world, doesn't matter who it is, what they do, people want crypto exposure. And this is just another avenue of that outside traditional crypto exposure or ETF exposure. Now we have people in companies like Stripe, payment processors, um, saying, hey, you can actually have crypto exposure as well. So this has been a long battle. And I think there's going to be more companies like this one that are coming in here after maybe sitting on the sidelines and saying, okay, it's finally time to make our move. This is too big of an addressable market to not want to tap into it. Now, what about this consensus news? You know, probably the really the only bearish news that we're having over here. And I have to say, I think this is, it's so wild and it's so silly um, that the SEC would declare this kind of stuff in the first place. So when we're looking at consensus and MetaMask and all this stuff, we have to remember that MetaMask is a decentralized wallet provider, right? I mean, they don't have access to the keys. They don't have access to funds. They're not brokers. And they say all of this in some of the statements as we kind of scroll through this over here. But, you know, they're not brokers. Like, they are not... They're, they're not the middlemen here that are in the active day process of managing these funds and the wallets and giving people crypto. It's like, no, they allow people to create their own crypto wallet, have complete control over it so that they can never be tampered with. They are not centralized custodians of these wallets. And I think it's just a lack of understanding when it comes to, to the SEC. And this isn't to get into anything that's political because it's not political at all. It doesn't matter who's saying this stuff. Um, but... When you're looking at anything in the government trying to make a claim like this, it just shows that, again, it doesn't matter what side of the spectrum it's on, you know, left, right, up, down, sideways, anything. You know, anyone who makes a claim that like something like this about, <laughs> about MetaMask wallets, it just shows that there's a disconnect between what their understanding of crypto and blockchain technology is and what it actually is in reality. And I think that truly by educating these individuals and educating everyone about this stuff, it would create a much more transparent and clear and easy to regulate environment that would benefit everybody. Um, but it's at, at moments like this when there's a disconnect and you have people who don't fully understand what wallets are and how blockchain works and other stuff like this, it's at those moments where the lack of understanding, the lack of knowledge um, creates problems that should so easily be avoided. Um, and so do I think anything is going to stick over here? I certainly hope not. Now, I'm not any kind of legal or financial person or anything like that, right? I'm not a lawyer. So I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of legal jargon that, jargon that goes into this. But I just can't see a world where the SEC is trying to like sue consensus and MetaMask and now they're trying to counter sue. And the whole thing is wild to me. So I uh, Again, I'm not like deleting my MetaMask and getting rid of it or anything like that, because um, ultimately I still hold the keys to that wallet, and uh, you know that that'll never change. Um, so, you know, is this something that I'm freaking out about? Absolutely not. Um, I think MetaMask is going to be fine. Again, I think that the big issue here is that there's just a barrier, or rather, a lack of information and a lack of understanding. And I think whenever that gets fixed, a lot of this will get cleared up as well. So that's probably something that'll just have to work out. It's unfortunate that people are going to have to get sued over it, but um, I do think that it will get resorted at the end of the day. Now, as we kind of look at the crypto markets, as we are continuing into the month of May over here pretty soon, uh, we see that Bitcoin's recovering really net nice and well off the lows of $60,000. And this looks like just one giant bull flag in my opinion right i mean we have this move to the upside we have this falling channel you know some people might even call this a bit of a pennant with the higher lows and lower highs but regardless bitcoin is consolidating roughly between 60 to 70,000 and it has been for a long time and as it's kind of uh, doing this bitcoin has recovered really well off of 
the lows over here. And so we kind of went back up into the into the major moving averages like the 20, like the 50 day moving average, rejected this as a little bit of a short term resistance level. And the big areas that I'm looking at is to accumulate Bitcoin lower with the overall hope <clears throat> that Bitcoin is eventually going to retest the highs uh, closer to $70,000. And that's my overall belief here is that these dips that we have are going to be buying opportunities. Now, if we crack the 60K support over here, that's going to be a big one where, you know, hey, if this 60K support cracks, I could easily see Bitcoin falling back down towards the low 50s, maybe high 40s, somewhere a little bit deeper down over in here. Now, again, that's a little bit of a far out, uh, you know, bearish scenario, so to say. But, you know, that's saying if support breaks, which we're not that close to really doing over here. We're kind of right in the middle of the range, so to say. And so overall, you know, I'm still looking at this market and saying, hey, I want to be buying the dips over here on Bitcoin as it kind of falls back down um, below, because I still think Bitcoin has the potential to go higher than it's currently priced at $64,000, which means that anything below that um, is a buying opportunity for me personally, because I think Bitcoin um, has some bullish uh, potential to the upside over here. And I think altcoins do as well. And so we're seeing a little bit of choppy action over here. Nothing too crazy. Again, we saw a really nice recovery of Bitcoin off the lows <clears throat> of $60,000. And now we're just consolidating after a nice move to the upside. So overall, I think the crypto market's looking pretty solid over here. Um, again, I'm very s still on the side of, of, of buying the dips um, and bullish on the middle to long term as well. But that's going to go ahead and wrap us up for today's market update. A lot of stuff happening in the great world of crypto. I hope all of you did enjoy this. As per usual, if you like the content that we make, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment. You know, Check out the podcast and the Crypto 101 channel as well. And we got a lot of great stuff that is coming your way. So thank you all for watching and we'll see all of you in next week's video.